Hi friends, Alice in Wonderland here, and I am coming to you to show you how, uh, or give you a garden update. And I originally had planned to do an entire series of different stages throughout the growing season of my garden, but I have not had very good luck this year. So we're just going to turn it into a garden update video and, um, that's what's happening uh, today. <laughs> so um, I hope you enjoy seeing these images. It's still, even though it you don't end up with um, a bountiful harvest, it's still enjoyable to do. It's a great way to de-stress. So I'm perfectly happy with uh, what's <laughs> what's going on um, because I've waited. I waited. Um, close to 35 years to have my own in-ground garden. So um, I am just happy to have it and very grateful for the things that uh, it gives me, even if it's not actual produce. <laughs> Ah, spring is here, when you have so many hopes and dreams and big wishes for what you're going to plant uh, metaphorically as well as uh, physically. Um, here I am uh, soaking some peat pellets to um, get ready to start some seeds. I had a huge flat from leftover from last year. So I just simply bought the pellets separate so that I could use them uh, again this year. I've always been a fan of these peat pellets. They just make it really quick and easy, <laughs> which is some, a phrase that I use all the time, quick and easy, uh, to get things started in, uh, indoors. And they're just so easy to just transplant out into uh, your garden or even if you were transplanting them into a pot. Um, my cat was also very interested in this process, so I should have seen that as a warning sign for what was to come for these, these little peat pellets. Now that the pellets have absorbed all the water, I am just transferring them from the bowl into the flat that I will be using. Um, you can see my cat is very interested in this process and a little bit disappointed why I am not allowing her to play with them. <laughs> Oh my goodness, look how ambitious I was. I've got calendula. Zucchini. Tomatoes. Basil. Valerian. Hot peppers, look at those guys, don't they look fun? <laughs> uh, some sweet peppers, but these ones were purple. I was so excited about them. St. John's wort, one of my favorites. And of course, catnip for you know who. And now I'm getting kind of mad that um, <laughs> I had specifically planted things for her and uh, you'll see in a moment what happens. 
So let me know in the comments so that I know that I am not alone in being overly ambitious in the springtime because you're feeling that energy surge and you're just so excited to get started on things. Rewatching this video clip is really uh, making me notice the correlation between my own personal ambitions and as well as my gardening ambitions are both very uh, overzealous. Um, so let me know if, if you can relate to that. <laughs> So now that I've gotten all the seeds planted, I am bringing the tray over to a grow light that I have um, to um, get them, get those seeds started, hopefully. If you've ever watched my live stream videos, this is what that bright light is behind the curtain. So if you've ever been curious, what's behind the curtain? It's this uh, arrow garden that, um, I haven't used in a really long time. I just use them to start the seeds here uh, because they tell you that you need to replace the bulb every time you start something new. So I've been waiting for this bulb to die so that I can, I have a brand new bulb to put in so that I can start growing things indoors again. But like this bulb will not die. Long story short, this is one of the many accidents that happened with the flat of uh, sproutlings. <laughs> um, the first of which I, I realized pretty quickly that I needed to move the plants uh, to another location. So I moved them into a small bathroom that had a window that got a lot of sunlight and it was absolutely perfect because I could close the door and it had plenty of sun. Um, we had a pretty chilly spring for this area and so I think the plants just didn't like being enclosed in that environment with like a heat vent on. And I think it was just like too warm for them. There was one time that I forgot to close the door after I was watering and they had demolished a lot of the sproutlings. Um, so there were very few survivors and I finally got to the point where we were ready to harden them off outdoors and there really weren't that many left. It was only a few, like one or two of each of the things that I planted and they did not like being brought out into the sunshine. I only did it like an hour a day at a time and it just eventually, they all did not survive. Um, so I guess maybe it wasn't meant to be and actually uh, revisiting this is kind of making me sad like wow I had so many and then ended up with nothing. But do not fret my friends because as life always reminds us when we focus on the negative that is all we will see. But if we take a look at the other things in our life and take a walk outside. We'll see all of the herbs that were coming up from last year. We've got some culinary sage, angelica root. Um, there's also stinging nettles that is very flourishing. Um, watch out, don't get stung. <laughs> and then behind that we have some lemon balm. So there's lots of things. Uh, if we focus on the positive, we'll see how wonderful and beautiful it is. And even this yarrow plant was doing so well, I need to separate it out because it's getting too crowded. So just when I'm thinking I don't have much to harvest on this first harvest day celebration, how could I forget the amazing garlic harvest? This is me getting ready to harvest these scapes, which um, if you leave them, they will eventually flower and you don't want that to happen because you want all of the energy to go back down to the bulbs. So you need to cut all of these scapes off. Um, they kind of turn into this like nutty flavor when you saute them. However, if you eat them raw, they, they taste like you bit into a clove of garlic. So how could I forget that I had this beautiful, bountiful garlic scape harvest? So garlic is my absolute favorite thing to grow now because it all it's always abundant and you get to it's a very long process but you get the scapes, you get the bulbs and you really don't have to do that much maintenance with it. And then later we did a live stream on Twitch of harvesting the actual bulbs. Um, so 
I've already had a first harvest and I need to remember that. Remember to look at the good things. Remember to look at the positive things in your life because um, garlic is now one of my absolute favorite things to grow. Um, you plant it in the fall and then you harvest it in the early spring or early to late spring and then you hang them to dry. I'm breeding them here and uh, you hang them to dry with all the roots and the dirt on still on them and leave them for, for a couple weeks and then uh, you brush off all the excess dirt and then you trim the roots and let them sit another two weeks to completely dry out until they're ready to eat. So fast forward to today, I've already done most of my herb harvest, so this is what is left in the garden. Uh, the things that I've let go to seed, um, things that are um, kind of getting ready to drop off for the season. Um, we have had such hot weather this year, and it's been hot and humid, and I'm actually um, in the process of just trying to cut everything back but I'm doing it in very little intervals because it's so hot. Um, here you see I've only mowed half of my lawn because the grass is so damp from all the humidity that you really have to do it in sections um, and <laughs> this is me um, waiting for the battery to charge and just kind of checking in on everything. And the pool is also something that I've kind of let go at this time. It, we've had so many storms and it's just kind of turning into a swamp at this point. Um, it's so hot, it's so humid. I've just kind of let things take over and it's really fun to see like what comes in. Um, this wood sorrel, the yellow, little baby yellow flowers, um, has kind of taken over one of my beds and it's really high in vitamin C. It has this citrus flavor, so it's kind of nice to add to salads. And I mean, I just like to let things grow and see what happens. There's also, um, I'm kind of worried about the white sage plant here because it should not be growing in this area. It's just kind of like my little magical plant. And um, it did flower this year though, so uh, it seems to be doing fine. I don't understand why it's supposed to like the desert, but um, I love it. It's beautiful. It's magical. I'm very grateful for it. So there is one thing that I will actually be eating on the day of the harvest, and that's this beautiful little bell pepper here. He is the first of the vegetables to come up, and um, I'm also just going to be saving these yarrow seeds. They have flowered and seeded once already and then you can see in the back there's more flowers coming up again. So um, I'm just going to trim off the what looks like the dead part but that is the seed pod of the yarrow. So I'm just going to trim all of that off, hang it to dry, and then see if I can separate the seeds out of it possibly for next year or I don't know giving away to gift to people. Um, so that is what I am doing for this first harvest. What are you doing? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear your beautiful, bountiful harvest. And um, this was, just making this video was a really important lesson to recognize that even if it doesn't feel like you have something to harvest at this time, uh, take, a, take a little bit of a closer look and you, you might find that um, you're absolutely abundant and prosperous. So happy llamas or lunasta or happy first harvest, whatever you choose to call it. And we'll see you next time, guys. Thank you so much for watching.
Just a Phase Moon Planner gives you all of the information that you need to learn about the moon phases and to start following along with the moon. This includes zodiac information and seasonal information. Every month starts on the new moon and provides activities as well as space to set intentions and plenty of blank space. Weekly vertical spreads provide plenty of room to plan your day as well as set intentions and pull weekly cards. Full moon information as well as more activities and more blank space to create the month uh, and make it as creative and unique as you are. Join a community of fellow moon lovers to discuss, plan, dream, set intentions, and to share your experience. Together, at the end of the year, we, we will reflect on the entire year and start planning for the year ahead. All of this is getting into flow with the cycle of the seasons, the year, the moon phases, as well as your own personal birth chart and cycle. Order your copy of the Just a Phase Moon Planner today to finish out the rest of 2022 by getting in touch with yourself and the moon.